As the sexual misconduct scandals continue to unfold, our new gender editor, Jessica Bennett, will provide updates, analysis and reflections on the coverage and conversation in a new newsletter. Sign up here to keep up with this watershed cultural moment, and tell us what you think in these gender at newyorktimes.com. Since news broke yesterday of Matt Lauer's firing, the latest in an ever-growing list of powerful men facing consequences for alleged sexual misconduct at work. I have been having a repeated flashback Mr. Lauer as moderator of a 2016 presidential forum, interrupting Hillary Rodham Clinton as she tried to lay out her plan to defeat the Islamic State. She needed to speak quickly, he reminded her, as they were running out of time. Even then it sent Twitter into a flurry tough to be a woman running for president, the pundit Norman Ornstein noted, while a variety of journalists mused that Mr. Lauer would have been far less likely to interrupt a male candidate that way. Now that interruption seems far more meaningful. In the remarkable moment we are witnessing, it is a reminder of how men like Matt Lauer, and Charlie Rose and Mark Halpern and Leon Wieseltier, and now Garrison Keillor, the public radio host fired just hours after Mr. Lauer, shaped our view of politics and world events, our very cultural narratives and all of them now stand accused of sexual harassment, or assault, or both. Mr. Lauer apologized Thursday morning, expressing sorrow and regret for the pain I have caused out in the weeks since the New York Times and the New Yorker first broke stories of the Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein's decades-long abuse of women he worked with. The hashtag hashtag MeToo has exploded on social media as a vehicle for women to share their stories. For perhaps the first time in history, powerful men are falling like dominoes, and vulnerable women are being believed at but the hashtag MeToo moment has become something larger a lens through which we view the world, a sense of blinders being taken off. What do we do about the fact that men accused of mistreating women shaped the story of the first female presidential nominee of a major party? What does it mean that men who have masturbated in front of, groped, threatened, paid off, and in some cases raped their colleagues also made so many films and plays and comedy acts that made us laugh or cry? And what to make of the reality that Roy Price, the Amazon executive who quit last month after being accused of whispering you will love my dick in a junior employee's ear, has the power to cancel shows made by and about women. This newsletter will explore those and other questions amid a massive news coverage and morass of public conversation. We'll provide updates and analysis, reflections and reporting, and ask you, our readers, to share your insights, viewpoints. Stories and ideas. I started as the Times gender editor on October 30th, or, if you like, the day the Times published this article documenting sexual assault claims against Mr. Weinstein dating back to the 1970s, and this one about harassment claims surfacing in the British Parliament. I've been covering gender issues since I began my journalism career at Newsweek, where I co wrote a cover story looking at what had, and had not, change for women of the magazine since its female employees sued for discrimination. Oh, hindsight again that story became part of a book that became the television series Good Girls Revolt, the one Mr. Price of Amazon killed. Last year, HarperCollins published my book, Feminist Fight Club, an illustrated guide to battling sexism at work that seems, suddenly, both more relevant and out of date. Now I, like you, am racing to keep up with the news in the full out dad below. We've highlighted some key articles from the Times and other publications, as well as some reader comments from the lively conversations on our articles. Please write to us at meetgender at nytimes.com and tell us what you think. Jim Rutenberg, our media columnist, was the first to break the news of Mr. Lauer's firing Wednesday morning, and by nightfall had written this thoughtful piece about how the accusations against so many of our trusted television luminaries could indelibly change what he called the television patriarchy. Two of our television critics, James Bonawazic and Margaret Lyons, published this conversation in which they wrestled with how to process these new, seedy images of men who millions of us had welcomed into our living rooms each morning. In our opinion section, Elizabeth Nolan Brown argued that NBC's decision to fire Mr. Lauer reflected, in part, the increasing power of consumers, their voices amplified through social media, to pressure companies. I really appreciated this walkthrough of Mr. Lauer's highs and lows, including his chance goodbye with Today co host Ann Curry, the time he told Ann Hathaway he'd seen a lot of you lately referencing paparazzi photos taken up her skirt. 